Can you read what's wrote on it? No? You can't see it? <laughs> All right, right here. Let's see. How about that? All right. Take your Bible choice to the book of Proverbs this morning. I wasn't going to use this for us, but I think it might be a little bit more beneficial. We started, a, I don't know how long it's been now, maybe two or three weeks ago, we did a lesson on the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. And so we're going to follow up on that a little bit further this morning. Amen. Appreciate you being here. Appreciate the goodness of the Lord. Amen. Let's do this. Amen. Proverbs chapter 30 was where we'll kick off. Proverbs chapter 30. We'll kind of do a little recapping and then we'll get in it. It's probably going to take a couple of Sundays, so it'll be okay. We ain't got to be in a hurry unless the Lord comes back. Amen. And he can tell us all about it then, right? Kingdom of God. And then the kingdom. Of heaven. There are two different things. Amen. Of course, God is not heaven and heaven's not God, right? So we know that to be true. Amen. Some people try to make them to be the same. But we know uh, we're going to worship our God, our God in heaven, amen, So, they're, and uh, they're not spelled the same. <laughs> so uh, they're not the same, amen. Apples are not oranges, and oranges are not apples, amen. So there is a difference in the kingdom of God, and it is a great study in your Bible, and it also opens up to a lot of other truths, amen, of the Bible itself also, amen. Proverbs chapter 30, we'll read verse number 29. Proverbs chapter 30, verse 29. I was looking it up a little bit again this morning. I don't know exactly how many times you can easily define with, with the technology we got, but the word king or kings or kingdom, except uh, their self, or uh, uh, in the Bible, about 2,500 verses. Not counting how many times they're mentioned, just that many verses. So the Bible has a lot to say about kings and kingdoms, amen. And a lot of kings, amen. Uh, uh, God had put uh, the devil in the beginning. We'll look at it as we go a little bit further in the study. Uh, Lucifer himself, he was over God's kingdom. Amen. He was the anointed cherub that covered. And we know that because when God made man, meaning Adam in the beginning, God gave him dominion over the earth, dominion, rule. He was the king of the earth. Amen. And he was to replenish this earth. Somebody had it there before him and reigned as a king, and the devil was that king over that, uh, that, that heaven. And then God put Adam over that kingdom, and Adam not only had, had the kingdom of heaven, he had a rule on earth, he had the kingdom of God because he was made in the image of God. So both kingdoms were on earth at one time through Adam, amen, and even Lucifer before his fall. And so he's king of heaven and king of the, uh, he's, he's the kingdom of, of heaven, which is a literal place, and the spiritual kingdom, which is God, Adam was made in the image of God. And then when Adam sinned, he lost that image of God, amen, until Jesus Christ showed back up 2,000 years ago to bring the kingdom of God back to the earth, amen. All they did was fight through the Old Testament is over who's going to be king of heaven, the literal, literal place of earth. They wanted to rule, we kind of you know, say you say heaven because we know heaven's up there, but heaven's actually a literal place, so they're fighting over that kingdom on earth. And there's kings that rise up and dominions and rulership and they just fight and fight and fight. And then one day the kingdom of God showed back up in the Lord Jesus Christ some 2,000 years later. He's God and he's come to rule the earth. So he has both kingdoms here and he's, uh, he's offering that kingdom to the world. And that's where John the Baptist and Jesus both are preaching the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God. Both kingdoms are here because God's come to bring the image back that Adam lost. And then when you get saved, amen, you get the image of God back. The kingdom of God is within you. Amen. But we're not fighting over a kingdom on this earth. Amen. We've got something spiritual on the inside. But there's coming a day at the end of, of the tribulation and millennial reign where God's going to reign on earth, a literal place, and he's, he's going to be sitting on his throne. God is in the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of God will be on earth again together. So it's there with Adam. It's there when Jesus Christ is here. Then the kingdom of heaven goes out the door. We're not fighting over an earth. The meek shall inherit the earth. The Jews are kind of inherit the earth. That's where those truths kind of 
it begin to make a lot more sense when we're not, we're not looking for this place. We're not trying to set up a political uh, kingdom on this earth. Amen. Our heaven's above. Amen. Well, we're going to sit, sit with the Lord. And so we're trying to take the kingdom of God to the world, how people can be born again, brought into the family of God, that spiritual kingdom that we offer. We're not offering the earth to the world. Hey, get right, you can have the earth. No, get right, you can have God. And you can go to heaven, amen. We're preaching the kingdom of God today. And so you see that thing going back and forth. And so look in Proverbs chapter number 30. Look in verse number 29. And the Bible says this, so much about the kingdoms. It's the theme of the Bible. All the way through, you find it entwined within there from beginning to end, even before God even made man, as we made mention earlier. Proverbs 30, verse 29 says, There are three things which go well, yea, four are comely in going. A lion, which is the strongest among the beasts, and turneth not away from any. You know what the lion is? He's the king of the jungle. Anybody turning away from him, he, he runs the show, man. He roars and everybody runs. He's that king of the jungle. Amen. He says, a hey, verse 31, a greyhound. Well, who's the greyhound? Well, he's the king of the track. Nobody outruns him. Amen. He runs the show. Amen. And the Bible says, and a he-goat also. What's the he-goat? He's the king of the farm animals. And God, you, don't try, you don't believe it? Go out there and try him. He'll butt you all around. Amen. And God's talking about people, those things that are strong and, and uh, among the beasts. Amen. They're comely in their going. And then what he says, there's four of them, though. There's not only a lion, the king of the jungle. You could say the greyhound's the king of the track, and you say the goat's the king of the farm. But then he says in verse number 31 also, and a king against whom there is no rising up. The king. There's a kingdom. We said last week, amen, about the kingdom of heaven and kingdom of God. And just a few things, amen. The kingdom of God is mentioned 33 times. Uh, the kingdom of heaven, excuse me, is mentioned 33 times in your Bible. 33 out of 32 verses. And all are found in the book of Matthew. And Matthew represents who? The king. You see Jesus Christ showing up in the gospel accounts and, and the book of Matthew is talking about a king and his kingdom. Amen. And the other ones speak of him as a servant and being the son of God or the son of man. But Matthew's very clear. It's about a king. Amen. And, he, and that thing's found all the kingdom of heaven, that literal kingdom is only found in the book of Matthew. That phrase kingdom of heaven is mentioned nowhere else but Matthew. 33 times in 32 verses. The kingdom of God is mentioned 70 times. In 69 verses. But it's not confined just to the book of Matthew. It's found in Matthew. It's found in John. We'll write some of them now. It's found in Matthew. It's found in John. Amen. We're talking about the kingdom of God. It's found in Acts. It's found in Romans. Amen. Flows even over into the Pauline epistles, the kingdom of God. That's what we're preaching. Uh, Paul, the apostle to the church, to reveal the revelation of the mystery of the church, he never preached the kingdom of heaven. And we're not to preach a kingdom of heaven. We're not trying to tell people to try to inherit the world. But there's some people doing it today because they're mixed up on the, what the Bible teaches about God's kingdom. Amen. It's found in 1 Corinthians, Galatians, Colossians, Amen. 69 time, ver, uh, verses in 70 times. And then lastly, 2 Thessalonians. Amen. It's kind of neat, ain't it? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Amen. Eight books is found, mentioned in there. Amen. No, as a matter of fact, I'm wrong here. It's actually Matthew through John. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John mentioned. So that makes four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, which is what I was thinking to start time. Ten books. You say, what's the big thing about that? Ten books? Matthew through John. What do I need to rewrite? That's ten books. You know what the number ten is in your Bible? Gentiles. Right? The number twelve is the number of the Jews, the twelve tribes of Israel. Gentiles, what's this kingdom of God? Well, it's for the Gentiles, for the whole world. Amen, Jew and Gentile. 
10 times. The Bible reveals God's plan from past, eternity, uh, uh, past, eternity, future, amen. It covers it all, amen. Hey, uh, we know as, we, as Bible students, all the Bible's not about you and I, amen. It's about many more beyond us. And God reveals many truths. And the main theme you could say, we can look through the Bible as hindsight's 2020. You know what I can see in my Bible? Jesus Christ everywhere. Everywhere I can see Jesus Christ. But that Old Testament saint couldn't see him. They were blinded to it. Revelation later revealed by God, amen, that we could see Jesus Christ through it all. But you know what? If anybody starts in the beginning and goes all the way through, you know what everybody can see? They can see about a king and a kingdom. They could pick up that theme of a king and a kingdom throughout the whole Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Amen. It runs. Amen. Amen. I'm glad we're saved. I'm glad we're born again to the family of God. Amen. But everybody ain't born again through the Bible. A lot of truth spread out through this whole book. But you'll find the king and kingdom being fought over from beginning to end until God makes the end of it. And we were God up in heaven when, up forever and ever and both kingdoms are put back where it should have been in a proper place. It's the way God wants it. Man's fighting over it, trying to bring it in. Amen. Thank God we're saved. Amen. Somebody said for every verse on salvation, amen, you can find five, five verses on the kingdom. So it's way outweighs the other. We never want to downplay salvation. We're glad we're saved and glad we can be born again and glad Jesus Christ showed up. It's all about Jesus. Amen. But the thing, that everybody could see from beginning to end is about somebody fighting over a kingdom, having dominion and rulership, whether it be on earth or whether it be in your heart. It's the theme of the Bible. We said last time it's the theme of life. Everybody wants to be the king. Who's going to run the show at your house? Amen. Somebody's going to be king. And they're going to fight until somebody gets submission. Amen. Or somebody makes them say uncle, you know. Amen. That's just the way it works. It's you go to work tomorrow. You know what it's all about? Who's the king of the job? Who's calling the shots? Who's running the show? Amen. Hey, you come to church. You know what people fight over? Why their church splits? Why their divorces? Why people change jobs? Because they don't like who's king. They don't like who's running the show. It's just a part of life. It's the theme of life. Somebody said if you go to the playground, they're going to fight over who's king of the hill. And somebody going to be the bully out there, amen. It's all about king and it's about who will be the king. That's the theme of life. Hey, you know who the simple truth is? You know who's the king? Whoever has the most power. Amen. Whoever has the most power, whether that be a home, whether it be a church, whether it be on the job, whether it be on the playground, it doesn't matter where you go who has the most power. You know who is the king of kings and lord of lords? The only potentate. He's the one with all powers given to him in heaven and in earth. Matthew chapter number 28, verse 18. The real king is Jesus Christ. He's the one with the most power, amen. And the best thing we can all learn to do is just submit to the power, amen, and let him have his way in our lives. So man has tried. You look out the your Bible for over 6,000 years to try to set up a kingdom. I mean, they, you know what they say? it on the earth, the political campaign or whatever. We're going to bring peace to the earth. Ain't nobody bringing peace to this earth. We're going to set up the kingdom. We're going to rule. You know who's going to set up a kingdom on this earth? The Antichrist. Amen. And deceive people. Amen. But people think we can bring in the kingdom and they're trying to substitute God for a kingdom on earth. Amen. Let's bring peace on earth. Let's make the Palestinians and the Jews get all alone. They ain't going to get alone. They're going to fight to death. Amen. It's just the way it is. There is a World War, war Three coming, amen, whether it be in our life or after, amen, they're going to fight over this thing and try to be the ruler. Man's tried to set it up and rule. That's what they did back in uh, Genesis chapter number 10 when they built that big tower to heaven. We're going to be the king. We're going to rule the show and be above them all. And God confounded their language and said, no, it ain't going to work like that, amen. They're trying to bring in a kingdom. They're trying to bring in peace. As the old saying is, without the prince of peace. And he'll be the one that'll set up kingdom and peace on this earth when the lamb lay down with the lion and that millennial reign and then, of course, eternity forever. Amen. Without a Bible and without Jesus Christ, you will not have true peace and true happiness. Amen. Amen. That's why people don't like this King James Bible because it's the king of all books. It's the one with the power. It's the one that rules, and the, better, the, uh, the sooner you submit to that rulership, the better off you'll be, amen. And there's two kingdoms in the Bible, the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God. 
and it straightens out a lot of doctrine, amen. Uh, look in Romans chapter 14, verse 7. Well, we said last week, I just, there's the, the, the description of both the kingdom of God is invisible because God cannot be seen. It's spiritual. It's a moral kingdom. Amen. Maybe you could write that down, amen, if you'd like. It's an invisible, spiritual, moral kingdom. Amen. Let's just write it down, amen. Invisible. Invisible, uh, spiritual, moral kingdom. Amen. That's the kingdom of God. Amen. It, 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 it's in your heart. Look in, we got a black one. That red can't be seen? You can't see it? Hard to see red. I got a black one. Amen. All right, it's going to be mixed match now. Amen. Can you see it now? Worse? Flip and don't try the other way. Does that work? No? All right, we'll make you happy. I got a black one. Amen. If mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. Somebody going to be the king of my house. Amen. <laughs> Look at Romans chapter 14, verse 17. Romans 14, 17. Is that clear? Better to be seen. Amen. Romans 14, 17. It is invisible, spiritual, moral kingdom. Amen. Romans 14, 17. Everybody got it? Except me. What's the first word there? For the kingdom of what? God is not meat. That's physical. And drink, physical. But, it, but righteousness Peace and joy in what? So it is what Brother Ben just said. It is what? Spiritual. It's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That is spiritual things. Amen. Amen. It is spiritual. It is the kingdom of God. Amen. It's not meat and drink. It's not a physical kingdom. It is a spiritual kingdom. Look in Luke 17. Luke 17, verse 20 and 21. Luke 17, 20 and 21. All right. It's within. Luke 17, 20, and 21. Somebody got it? Somebody read it. Romans, Luke's. The kingdom of what should come? The kingdom of God. Observation. It's where? It's within you. Come up not with observation. So it's invisible. Right? It's within you. You know when it happens? At the new birth. Amen. When you get saved, you know what you get? You get the kingdom of God. You know who moves inside of you? God moves inside of you. Now, he's promised me heaven, but I didn't get it when I got it. Amen. Except you can go to Ephesians chapter number 6. We're seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Heaven's going to be our home. We're going to be there in that literal place one day. But the kingdom of God is within you. When you receive God into your heart, amen, he morally changes your life. It's spiritual. It's invisible. It come up not with observation. It's within you. It's the new birth. It's what Brother Danny Ray read this morning, John chapter number 3. Amen. You must be born again. And when you get born again, you get righteousness, joy, and peace in what? The Holy Ghost, which is within you. It's not meat and drink. Amen. You don't get it by eating a, eating a wafer and drinking a hooch. That's what they say at the, the Catholic institution. Amen. It's meat and drink. It's you taking a wafer and put it on your tongue and drink a little liquor. Amen. No, it's spiritual. It's invisible. It's within you. It is the new birth, what we preach, which is the kingdom of God. So it is different. It's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hey, and because you received him, John chapter number 3, you can go back and read it. We read it this morning, chapter 3, verse 3 through 5. You can go on with verse 7 where it says you must be born again. Hey, Amen. If you receive God into your heart, you will one day see the kingdom of God. You'll see God literally and you'll see heaven. 
but it's within you. Luke chapter 17. It is spiritual. It is invisible. It is moral. But what about the kingdom of heaven? Look in uh, Matthew chapter number 8, verse 11. Matthew 8, verse 11. It's different. Where one's invisible, one's spiritual, one's moral, the kingdom of heaven is literal. That's the difference. It's physical. Uh, how do you spell physical? H Y S, right? I I C A L. There you go. Good job, brother, whoever. Amen. Matthew chapter 8, verse 11. It's literal, physical, uh, uh, physical it's visible. You can see it. I, hey, one day I'm going to see heaven. You can't see God, He's spirit. And they that worship must worship him in spirit and in truth. What does the Bible say about the kingdom of heaven? Matthew chapter 8, verse number 11. Let me get there. I'll read it to you. Matthew 8, verse number 11. Anybody got it? Read it, Brother Ben. If you're going to sit down somewhere and if you're going to come from the east and the west with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, it's going to be literal, physical, and it's going to be visible. God's going to set up his kingdom on this earth and Abraham and Isaac's going to be there, the Lord's going to be there, and he's going to sit on the throne of David and rule and reign in the millennial reign, but then he's going to do it in eternity also. Amen. It is very visible. It is physical. You can sit down in it. Amen. You can see those that are there. That are there amen. Look in Matthew chapter number 11. Look in verse number 11 and 12. Matthew 11, verse 11 and 12. They're two different kingdoms, amen. Matthew chapter 11, verse 11 and 12. He says, Verily I say unto you, you got it? Among them that are born of women, there have not risen a greater than John the Baptist, notwithstanding he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. For from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth what? Violence, and the violent take it by what? Force. You know how you take over the kingdom of heaven? You take it by force. You know how you take over a kingdom, a literal place on earth? You're going to, it's caught by war. It's by fighting, amen. Hey, it's a physical, literal, visible kingdom that is fought over, amen. You fought, it's fought for. Amen. You take it by force. Amen. It's a literal kingdom. And that's what the world's trying to do, take over the kingdom. Now, take it by force. Amen. You've got to be the ruler to take it. Amen. Hey, there's coming a day when God will set it up on earth. But that is not what we're preaching today. I'm, you're not to go out on a street corner. You're not to knock a door, get up in a pulpit and say, hey, you get right, you get the earth. No, you get right, you get heaven. But most of all, if you get right, you get God inside of you. You get righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. God, we're offering a spiritual kingdom to the world. You know what the world wants? They want everything, they want everything physical. Show me a sign. Show me a wonder. They want things visible. It, and we're offering a spiritual kingdom. You receive it by faith. You don't see it. Amen. Amen. You receive it by faith. Look in Acts chapter number 1. Acts 1, verses 3 through 4. One day... Uh, three through seven, I believe it is. Jesus Christ is going to come back and he's going to set up this kingdom. He will reign on earth. Amen. They were looking for it when he was on earth. Why? Because he was preaching the kingdom of heaven. He was preaching the kingdom of God. John the Baptist was preaching the heaven and the kingdom of God. The disciples were preaching both kingdoms. And they, we look at questions sometimes. Why would they ask that question? Look in Acts chapter seven, uh, verse, Acts chapter one, excuse me, Verse number 3 through verse 7. Look at this. To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs. Talking about the Lord Jesus Christ after his death. He showed himself visible. And the Bible said being seen of them 40 days and, see, and speaking of those things pertaining to the what? Kingdom of God. He's telling them. He's preparing them. He's speaking to them about things to come. The Holy Ghost is going to come. He's going to dwell within you. And he's been 40 days, been preaching those things to him to get ready for God's kingdom, the kingdom of God. Now look at this, verse 4. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, 
which, he, which saith he, ye have heard of me. What's the promise? The Holy Ghost is coming. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Right? The kingdom of God. Uh, at, uh, Luke 17, verse 20 and 21. So that's what he's been preaching to them. Verse 3, the kingdom of God. Look at verse 5. For John truly baptized with water, be, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to what? Israel. Jesus Christ is sitting there speaking to them about the kingdom of God, the Holy Ghost coming, that kingdom that's within you, and those Jews say, hey, at this time are you going to restore the kingdom to Israel? Visible, literal, physical kingdom. They want to know where the kingdom is. <laughs> no, I'm not about to do that, son. I'm about to send back to the Father, and, and there's going to be something that happens after me, that kingdom of God's about to break forth. That mystery will be revealed a little bit later, but they're wanting a literal, physical, visible kingdom. Hey, when he come as king of the Jews, he come to set it up. But they rejected the literal kingdom, and God now offers the spiritual kingdom, but he will in time pull it back into a literal and physical kingdom in the future. But they wanted to know, is it now? Because they were looking for it literally, just as it was prophesied in the Old Testament that he would rule and reign. But they could not see. It's like uh, Sco uh, uh, not Schofield, but Larkin's drawings. He talked about the kingdom. When you look at prophecy, he said it was like this. He said there's two mountain peaks. Amen. And they're way back here in history. Mankind is he's looking to the future, trying to figure out what's going to happen. You know what he saw? He saw God suffering, and he saw God reigning. They can only see the mountain peaks. They couldn't see the valley, which was the church in between. Amen. That's, that's the difference. Amen. When you look at prophecy, they, they could see him coming. They could see him dying. They could see him reigning. But they could not see that there was something between. And that was the church, amen. He died, they just saw, they looking at the peaks of prophecy. And they missed that mystery in the middle, which was the church, amen. And it happens a lot of times, amen. I got a racer somewhere in here. So that's the way it is in prophecy. Sometimes they miss some of the things that are in there that were hidden, that were later revealed, but they were there, amen. And God's plan the whole time, amen. So it happens. You see this kingdom. One day he will rule and reign on earth. So let's look at some differences, amen, as we've kind of already spelled them out a lot already. The, number one, we could say, it's already here, if you want to do it like this, the difference between, excuse me, between them, spiritual. The kingdom of God uh, is spiritual. The kingdom of heaven is what? What's the difference? It's physical. It's clear. The kingdom of God is spiritual. It's within you. Luke 17, verse 20 through 21. Romans 14, verse 17, 14 through 17. The kingdom of God is within you. One of them is spiritual. Amen. Amen. One of them is physical. You take it by force. Amen. Uh, number two. So the kingdom of God is what? It's moral. It's a moral kingdom. You know, it'll morally change your life. Amen. It'll change you morally, amen. You, if you wanted to put them like in, in, let's see, Luke 17, it's within you, it's spiritual, it's moral, it would be Romans 14, 17, righteousness, peace, and joy uh, in the Holy Ghost. I'll abbreviate it for you, how about that? Righteousness, peace, joy. In the Holy Ghost. It's a moral kingdom. Amen. We should do this right here though. Shut up. Number one, so it matches. Number two, the difference. One's spiritual, one is physical. Matthew chapter 8, verse 11. You can go back and check them out again. Or maybe have it in your notes for the future. Amen. So one of them is uh, spiritual, one of them is physical, one of them is moral, one of them is political. Not moral, it's political. Uh, cool. That's how you spell it, right? Look in Isaiah chapter number 9. I believe it's verse number 6. It's a political kingdom. You've seen these prof prophecies. It's actually chapter 9, verse 7. Amen. Isaiah, well, you, just, you know, we can fix it easy. A little scribal error. How about that? It's a political kingdom. It's a ruling on earth. Amen. It was part of prophecy. It's a political kingdom. 
Isaiah chapter number 9, verse number 7, the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Anybody got it? What's the first word there? Oh. Isaiah 9, 7. The Bible says of, let me see if I can find it here, of, of, his, of the increase of his government. That's political. And peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David. I mean, good. look back. We could have put verse 6 in there. Would it come? I mean, look at verse 6. For unto us a child is born. He came, right? He was born on earth. Uh, and a son is given. Amen. Physical and spiritual. Kingdom of God, uh, the Son of God and the Son of Man. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. Was the government on his shoulder when he came the first time? They rejected him. We have no king but Caesar. We have another ruler. They thought they had the power. Jesus said, man, you ain't got power. He said, I got power to lay my life down, the power to take it again. Who was Pilate? Pilate thought he had power to, to kill him. You can't kill him. He's God, amen. But he's here offering him a legit offer to the world, amen. The government's going to be upon his shoulder. Hey, it wasn't then, but you can mark it down. If it's in this book, it will be. It's coming, but it was offered here when both of them were preached. But they rejected this government uh, on his shoulders. And the Bible said his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of, his in of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Did has that came to pass? Is he ruling on this world? Uh, you ain't blaming this one on God. <laughs> Not in America or anywhere else, or, or anywhere else around the world. Amen. He ain't ruling this world, but there coming a day he will. We keep pushing it down a little bit further. Hey, after he raptured the church out and puts the Antichrist in his place and then sets this earth back in order, he's going to be ruling down here and show you how it's supposed to be. And then the devil ain't going to like that. He's going to rule up and try to throw the power of that one down. And then God's going to bound him forever, amen, and it's going to be over, and he's going to make a new heaven and a new earth. Amen. He's going to be ruling. There'll be no end upon the throne of David. A throne, physical, you see it? Political, government on his shoulders. Uh, upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. It is a political rulership government of this earth. Amen. So, number three. Amen. The kingdom of God is spiritual. It is moral. It's heavenly. Heavenly. And the kingdom of God will be what? Earthly. Earthy. Earthly. Earthly. Amen. They're two different. Amen. It's a heavenly kingdom. Amen. Now look in Ephesians chapter number 1. Ephesians chapter 1. Heavenly. 20 and 21. It's a couple, you can, I mean, there's all kind of verses. Uh, chapter 2, verse 6. You might find Ephesians chapter 1, verse 20 and 21 and read it. Amen. Twenty and twenty-one. In Christ, right? It's a heavenly kingdom. Look in chapter two, verse six. Read that one too, brother. He made that. It's a heavenly kingdom. Amen. It gives us heaven. Amen. But the kingdom of heaven is an earthly kingdom. That's where people have a lot of trouble because of the word heaven. But remember, heaven's physical. It's literal. You're going to see it. It's visible. God is a spirit. It's within you. It's the new birth. It's spiritual. Amen. But it is heavenly. But this was an earthly kingdom, a rulership, a government on his shoulders. Look in Genesis 15. Genesis 15. Verse 18 through 21. And God promised that kingdom. He promised back through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, right? That ruling of that kingdom. Amen. It's coming. Genesis 15. It's an earthly kingdom on earth. The Jews have been promised the earth. 
You say, what's the big deal about the kingdom of heaven and kingdom of God? As you go on, you're going to see it shows a lot of great truths about there's a difference in salvation in the Old Testament and the New Testament. There was a difference in what Jesus Christ preached when he was on earth. He's preaching the kingdom of heaven and kingdom of God both together. So people can't differentiate the both. And they think, well, he's got to be preaching the new birth, being born again, because John chapter 3 preaches it. But John's revealed his mystery afterward, after Paul's given his mystery, which makes sense. But Jesus is preaching them both. That's why on the Sermon of the Mount, he said, the meek shall inherit the earth. I mean, you, is he talking to you? No, he's talking about in the book of Matthew, where the meek shall inherit the earth, Matthew 6, 5, 6, and 7. It's, it's talking about the, the earth and inheriting earthly things. We can get spiritual truths out of it. Thank God the Bible, we can get all something out of every bit of it. But there's some direct truths being given there, and he's talking about something literal and physical, and he's talking about the Jews. The Jews have always looked at it literal and physical. They were started with signs, and they always going to require a sign. But we're looking at something spiritual, God within you. That's why all this stuff begins to tie out when you begin to see the difference in the two. It's an earthly kingdom. Genesis 15. Somebody read verse 15 through 18. Somebody read it. Anybody? He made, stop right there. He made a covenant with Abram about where his feet are standing. Upon, where, what, did, what did it say, sister? That land's theirs. God made a promise with him in a literal physical place over there in Jerusalem. He said, that's going to be yours and to your seed afterward. It's, it, does that ever been of it? Read the rest of it. 19, they're going through 21. Amen. That's going to be, God said, I'm giving you this literal earthly kingdom. Amen. Listen to this in Revelation chapter 11 and verse 15. Here's what it said about the future. Amen. At the end of the tribulation. Here's what it says at the end of the tribulation. After that second woe is past, verse 14, verse 15 says, And the seventh angel sounded, and there was great voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms, the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and his Christ, and he shall reign forever and what? Ever. Amen. He said the kingdoms of this world, they, God's coming to an earthly kingdom to set up. He calls it the throne of David. He's going to rule and reign on that land that he promised all the way back there to Abraham and through his seed forever. It's an earthly kingdom where this one's a heavenly. Amen. Thank God for the difference. Amen. Hey, you know what else it is? The kingdom of God, number four. Not going to be able to see this from Brother Ben. Universal. It's universal. You know what the difference is in this one? If you study your Bible all the way through and, and rightly divide it the way it should, it is Jewish. This thing's promised to the Jews. This earthly, political, physical kingdom of heaven, it's a Jewish where this one's universal. You know, this is for Jew and Gentile, bond and free, whosoever will. Look in Romans, Romans chapter 10, verse 13. For whosoever shall call upon, who, for who? Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be, what? Say, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13, for we are all, all baptized into one body, whether we be Jew or Gentile or bond or free. It is universal. We take this to the world. It's not just for the Jews. This thing here is Jewish. And if you want it, you're going to get in the Jewish side and stand with Israel if you're going to reign with Israel. Amen. That's why it's important to take care of Israel. First Chronicles 17. We ain't going to turn and look at this one, but you can go back and look at it. It's, you know, it's, it's just uh, 11 through 15. First Chronicles 17, 11 through 15. You know, we, it's exciting what God's promised to the Jews and it's clear that it's Jewish. It's clear that it's earthly. It's clear that it's political. It's clear that it's physical. 
in his truth and we're to stand with Israel and pray for the peace of Jerusalem. But man, this is the one that excites me. <laughs> man, just to be honest, amen, this is the one I got. This one is inside of me. Not that we shouldn't care for God's Jewish people and the kingdom of heaven that is to come, amen. You know what we're told? Look in, look in Matthew chapter 6, number 5, the differences. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. You got it? But seek, you see that? Seek ye first, what? The kingdom of God. You just seek that first. Hey, seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. It is a, it is to be sought for. You're to seek the kingdom of God, amen. You know what you're to do with this one? You're to wait for it. Now, we're to wait for his coming. I understand that. And wait on the Lord to come out and get us. Amen. But when God commanded you in the Bible, when it comes to the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, he said, seek this kingdom of God, that the spiritual things, and let these things be added unto you. But you know what you're to do with this? You're to wait for it. He's coming. He's going to set up his kingdom. And he's going to rule and reign on this earth. Amen. So there's a difference between the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God. So they are separate. Amen. So we see... Number one, we said that, that we saw the description of both. Number two, we see the differences of both. But number three, next time we'll look at the dispensational layout of both. And we'll see how these kingdoms have become in with Lucifer. He falls. God gives dominion to Adam and how that thing's fought through throughout the Old Testament. And then Jesus Christ shows up and brings the kingdom of God back and it's offered and how it'll pick back up in the tribulation. So we'll see how that thing plays out through our Bible. Amen. Any questions thus far? We went over a lot, tried to recap some of the other. But it's clear. You take your Bible, if you believe what God said, they're two separate kingdoms, and they're clearly described in the pages of the Scripture. Let God be true and every man a liar. Amen. All right, amen. Let's take a little break and get ready for worship.